Hey everyone, welcome back. So today's look is a Charlotte Tilbury Walk of No Shame look. Um, I have the blush, the eyeshadow palette, and some of the lip products. So I thought I would pull it all together and do this monochrome kind of look for you. A little bit more of a winter look, and we are going into summer in Australia, but the other side of the world's going into a winter look, and um, I think they're definitely beautiful products all year round. So if you want to see how this look came together, then just keep watching. Okay, so my skin is just feeling super dry and dehydrated at the moment. I don't know what's happened in the last couple of days, and I've already prepped with my normal skincare, but I feel like it's not enough today. So I'm going to use a bit of the um, Magic Cream Light. So I just used this one for the first time the other day, and I was pleasantly surprised about how much hydration it Gave. I thought it would be um, quite lightweight, maybe something that was more suited to like an oilier skin type. Um, but my skin did feel really nice and plump after using it. And my lips are also really dry too, so I'm just going to go in with the Tatcha. Um, this is the Gold Spun Camellia Lip Balm. Uh, I think this one is a little bit overrated <laughs> for what it is. I've definitely had lip balms where um, my lips have like retained moisture for longer. So I probably wouldn't spend that much on a lip balm again. I wanted to use the Airbrush Flawless Foundation in this video, but just because my skin is a little bit more dehydrated, I don't think that's going to be the best one to go with. So I've got the Makeup Forever HD Foundation. Um, I really like this one because it it doesn't cling to any, um, any texture on the skin or anything. It still gives a really beautiful kind of satin finish. I'm just actually using a little bit of the Kevin Aquan Central Skin Enhancer on these blemishes and a bit of the MAC Bright Forecast under the eyes. I've never really liked using concealer before foundation because I just find that once you blend the foundation over the top anyway you kind of end up shifting the concealer that you've laid down first and then you have to reapply so I do prefer to just put on a layer of foundation and then you can kind of judge a little bit better where you do need that extra coverage. But I've seen some people, you know, doing it the other way lately, which is, I mean, that's the way I was taught by my mum to do the concealer first um, when I started learning makeup. But I thought, I thought I would try it out to see if it does help. But I can see that I've just ended up like shifting it away once I've blended the foundation. So I don't think it really works for me. But I do think that that does something, have something to do with how I do um apply my foundation like I think some people use more padding and stippling motion where I definitely do more buffing and blending so all personal preference but I thought I'd just give that one a go I have always loved this foundation because I feel like no matter how much you build it up it it never looks heavy and cakey it always retains a really kind of natural kind of skin like finish I am just going to leave the skin for now and then do the eyes and come back to the skin because the blush I want to use is, it's quite dark. I don't know if it's really suited to my skin tone. So I really want to do the eyes first and then kind of judge how much I need to add onto the face. And this is the Tom Ford Brow Pomade. Just zooming into the eyes so you can see how much growth there has been on my brows again with that serum. It's, yeah. They're doing really well so i'm very happy with that and then i'm just using a little bit of the medium brown um, benefit micro filling pen just to add a little bit of texture and dimension through those brows now i got this walk of no shame palette from charlotte tilbury in her latest mystery box and in previous mystery boxes from her i actually got the lipstick as well and also the blush which is this one. So I thought I would do like a walk of no shame look. Um, her lip pencil was also actually on sale on Beautylish last week and I was getting some other things so I added it to the cart. She has a walk of no shame eye pencil as well which I was kind of tempted to look into that one but I have this Makeup Geek um, eyeliner in the shade Plumeria and it is kind of similar or at least it's got similar tones to the rest of the palette. So I was like, I'll just use this one and see how I go. Um, and then if I really love the tones, I can always expand my collection to the rest of the range. So to start with, I was thinking, do I just follow her tutorial that she has kind of laid out on here with like the prime enhance pop smoke. Um, but I think I'm going to, you know, play around um, on my own and come up with my own look. I 
picked up the Natasha Denona mini Xenon palette as well. That's what I was getting when I picked up the lip pencil. And I also picked up a couple of pairs of Ardell lashes that oh, aren't available in Australia. Um, it was hard to kind of tell what they looked like when buying them on the website. But now that I've received them, I'm like, oh, I don't know if I really <laughs> love how they look. But they were only like, you know, $3 or something each over there. And I got the cutest little sample um, from Beautylish, my order. I don't think I've ever received a sample with Beautylish before. But it's the, I think it's pronounced Orbe um, Curl Jelly for Shine and Definition. And let me see. It's like a little like hair mask. But it's in the cutest little parcel. I thought that was adorable. I also received a box from Wella. They sent me the Color Motion shampoo, conditioner, and a hair structure mask as well. So I'm looking forward to playing around with those ones. To start with, I'm going to use that Plumeria pencil and I'm just going to line along the top of the lash line, just as a kind of smoky base. And I'm just taking a small pencil brush and I'm just lightly buffing over that. I'm just, I'm not smoking it up too much just kind of diffusing it so it's not a stark kind of harsh line. I'm sure I've spoken about these pencils before. They are beautiful. They're so kind of smooth and creamy and pigmented. And you do have time to kind of um, blend them out after application. You have like a couple of minutes of play time, but then they do set in place and last all day. So they're great. It's like an eyeshadow base. And I'm actually gonna tie it line with the Obsidian pencil from the same range just so we don't see any gaps peeking through the lash line. I poked myself straight in the eye with that pencil. <laughs> um, I'm going to take the um, Enhanced Shade, which is that really beautiful um, kind of cranberry, cranberry color. I just love this palette. It's just so like sultry and sophisticated and I don't know, very drawn to it. Just dusting that through like the outer third. I'm not loading up too much product on my brush. Just focusing it there and then with what's left, just taking it up and just softly dusting and blending it through the um, through the crease. And then I'm gonna take the prime shade and I'm just taking it on a smaller kind of pencil brush and I'm just dusting it through that inner, inner portion of the eye. And I'm also taking that underneath as well. I attended the Charlotte Tilbury Masterclass, the Mecca Masterclass that they had during the week, and I was really hoping that they'd focus more on some of the um, eyeshadow palettes, but they kind of glossed over them. I'm taking that Plumeria pencil as well, and I'm going to trace underneath, and then that pencil brush again, just to smoke it all out. And just kind of dragging it up to meet up with the shadow on the top. Okay, that went further than I was expecting and kind of created that winged shape, which I think I like it. So I'm actually going to keep it like that. <laughs> um, I'm going to go, I'll go over the top and kind of set that in place and smoke it out with the um, smoke shade from the palette. Just a very small amount because this one seems to be a little bit more powdery than the other shades. Definitely a lot more powdery. I experienced some fallout with that one. And I'm going to take that brush that I used before with no extra product on it. And I'm just going to kind of lightly smoke that one out and just diffuse any really harsh lines. I'm going to take the pop shade on my finger and I'm going to pop that onto the eyelid. This pop shade feels really, really dry compared to the palette of pops formulas. They're a lot more creamy. I think I'm just gonna have to go a little bit further in with that. And I'm actually gonna take it into the waterline as well. I'm taking some of that black Makeup Geek pencil. I'm just taking it on a really kind of flat shading brush and just tightly wiggling that on the lash line. I need to have something to break up the um, eyeball and then the red kind of burgundy shade because sometimes it can look a little bit sickly. It doesn't quite look right. So I think I do need that just as a barrier and then take that burgundy pencil on the same brush and then just pat over the top just to blend everything in. I don't really want like any harsh lines with this look, so just blended that again and I'm just adding some more of that pop shade. I've got some MAC Light Boost 
Maybe once the rest of the face is on, it will come together. I'm gonna use the MAC Mineralized Skin Finish in Light Plus just to set under the eyes. And I'm just using a little bit of Tarte Shape Tape just in those areas where I needed a tiny bit extra coverage. I'm gonna use the MAC Extended Play Mascara. But Charlotte was really talking up her Pillow Talk Lashes Mascara um, in her masterclass. She said it's amazing for people who have really straight and flat lashes, and I do. I definitely like looking for a mascara that's gonna add kind of lift and definition. I have a mini sample of it that I got during one of my online orders, but I'm just waiting to use up some of my other mascaras at the moment. And I'm just using some of that Hollywood contour wand. Just try and spread that product around. But I have found it's one that if you do go overboard, it is very easy to come back from. It doesn't make the skin look really muddy and dirty. Now I'll use some Spotlight um, Beauty Light Wand. Purely because it's exploded in the canister and I want to kind of use the products in there before it all kind of dries up. And this is the blush. I'm a bit nervous about this because it definitely seems a bit deep for my skin tone. So I'm going to try and focus on that center portion. Um, this is a little bit lighter to pick up some of that color instead. This will be a beautiful addition to my kit for a more medium to deep skin tone. Maybe I went a little too bright under the eyes because um, I did end up taking that blush across the nose just because it did look a bit stark just on the balls of the cheeks. But um, I think that's worked out pretty well. I'm just going to use a little bit of the Filmstar um, Bronze and Glow, the Sculptor shade, just to kind of define the cheekbones a little bit more. And just a tiny bit dusted along the temples. I'm just popping on the Ardell Naked Lashes. These are the ones in 427. I like these ones because they've got good length, they're wispy, they've got a very thin band, and they're very comfortable. And they're not so dense that they completely kind of cover the eye look. You can see there, that's with the lashes on, without lashes. These ones are just stunning. So they're the 427. I haven't seen them available in stores though. Um, they got sent to me, these ones. They sent me a couple of pairs, but I've yet to see them available in stores. So I hope they're going to be easy to, to repurchase. <laughs> I'm just going to touch up with a little bit of that Makeup Geek pencil in the waterline. Bit of MAC Fix Plus on that prime shade and popping it in the inner corner just to add some brightness. Just patting over with that powder underneath the lash line. I don't think I need to powder the rest of the face. I just powdered under the eye just to prevent any kind of um, smearing and kind of bleeding of that eyeliner and to kind of keep everything nice and bright. Um, but because my skin is so dehydrated at the moment, it um, the makeup is looking pretty kind of flat and matte, even though this is normally like a satin finish foundation. So um, no powder today, I don't think. I'm just gonna pat over the forehead because it's really settling. Now using the MAC Prep and Prime Lip Primer and now the Walk of No Shame Lip Pencil. And last but not least, the lipstick. Now, the lipstick's called Walk of Shame. I'm not sure why the lip pencil, the blush, and the eye palette are called Walk of No Shame. Um, I've heard that it was originally Walk of Shame and then it got rebranded to Walk of No Shame because of some, like, controversy on the name. I don't know how true that is, but um, the colours are definitely the same. It's hard for me to get an even lip shape at the moment because of my um, lips being so dry. They're a little bit textured and there's a little bit of cracking along the lip line. So I'm trying the best that I can. I'm just going to finish off with a tiny bit of this Hollywood Superstar Glow Highlighter. 
it's a nice soft highlighter. It doesn't have any kind of chunky glitter or sparkles in it. And it doesn't seem to emphasize the texture too much on the skin. So it might be an option for someone who, yet yeah, maybe has a more textured skin, potentially has acne scarring or a more mature skin. This could be a really good option because it doesn't kind of cling cling to any texture and it's a nice neutral shade it's not too gold it's not too um silvery or cool it's that perfect kind of in between it's got a little bit of that champagne it's got a bit of like a peachy pink tone to it i'm actually pleasantly surprised by how much i do like this one i'm just taking one last dust with that blush brush over the skin not adding any extra product and then a little bit of the airbrush flawless setting spray The smell of this one is so nice. I just thought I would quickly just jump in. I was trying to take photos of the look and it just wasn't looking quite right. Um, so I decided to change the lip color and I think this eye look maybe looks better with the nude lip. Um, I used the Kevin Aquan. This is the Flesh Tone Lip Pencil in Medium. And I used the Maybelline Lifter Gloss in 003 Moon. And this is how it looks. So I think on me, it's more suited to a more neutral lip. I think the, the red was just a little bit too much. And there you have it. That's the finished look. I'm very happy with how it came together. When I smoked out that eyeliner a little bit too far, I was a bit concerned that um, it could have been a bit of a mess, but I really like how it all comes together. A uh, monochrome look, I think is very in at the moment apparently so um definitely on trend but i think the colors are beautiful and flattering the textures and the formulas of the products are gorgeous as always um that lip color is very very comfortable um, for a matte lipstick it still feels very creamy um the eyeshadows went on really really nicely they just blended effortlessly so as i always say definitely definitely recommend um, investing in a Charlotte Tilbury eyeshadow palette. Thank you so much for watching. I think the next video will be with this mini Zenon palette from Natasha Denona, which I'm a little bit scared about because they're not really my colors, but it's good to always push yourself out of your comfort zone. So keep an eye out for that video um, very shortly. It should come within the next couple of weeks. Leave any comments or suggestions down below if there's any other videos you like to see. And as always, yeah, keep an eye out on my Instagram because I do post there more frequently. Thank you for watching.